Hello and welcome to the Blues Cast. We're back. All right, it's uh, Tim and Ben in the studio with you. That probably sounded really horrible. The uh, microphone was probably peaking with that, but we're going to be good now. Uh, we're back for another season really, really late. So first of all, sorry everyone. Yeah, We've been very unactive. That. It's oh, I've knocked the keyboard off the desk. It's all going horribly Mate, this, wrong. Mate, this is like our season, just tip forward right there. Yeah, that, that is our season. It's, it's that is the apart, Blues Cast. We're back. It's so weird. Because we finally won at the weekend. People who don't do radio or podcasting will not appreciate this, but it's so weird for me being this far back from the mic because I've realised that the microphone I'm using, I'm, just, I'm leaning back right now and the, the audio quality is just there. So it's a blessed time. Um, and yeah, we're just going to be diving back straight into things and hopefully, especially covering the women's team more because three wins out of three for Blues women, Ben. Yeah, and it's a bit mad. it. Definitely. Mark Skinner and his grand vision to sell out Wembley Stadium, or maybe St Andrews first, is coming into fruition, and anyone who says otherwise is just a no-good naysayer. But I think, first of all, we will start with the men's team. And I guess, in terms of the games that we've been off-air off, off air for, kind of like a so-so start to the season, I guess. Like, nine points from nine games. Yeah. So, nothing massive to write home about, but equally, given the kind of form we were in last season and how close we once again came to getting relegated, probably a bit of relief for us. Bit of relief, and I think the big, uh, the big point for us is that we are actually playing good football for once, and yeah. possibly maybe the best football we've played um, in the past few seasons. But obviously, the big talking point is that we've not got the, the results and the, uh, the the wins yet, mm. and points on the board which we need. Um, but I think performances-wise, probably the best we've seen. You know, it's just typical Blues that we've yeah. played so well. We've been so unlucky not to um, not to win the games that we have, and I think the big the big one that, that just showcases that perfectly was the West Brom game, the, the 1-1 at home. Yeah, uh, um, with uh, West Brom. Because yeah. I, I, I guess that's a key uh, indicator of how far we've come. Like West Brom, really bad last season. I'm not sure how many of their players they've um, even kept. They've kept a few, but they're, 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 they're flying high themselves at the third in the table. And well, the there you go then. We, so, we should have beaten them comfortably. I think there's a big Do, um, do you think that's statement? just... The Championship is a weird, weird league. Like I remember when we used to lose to, lose to Brentford... And then beat like no sorry we we'd beat Brentford who were top of the table then lose to Doncaster the next week at home, <laughs> and I just think you, you get those kind of weird results in the championship or do you think there is something more that Gary Monk is building that it's it's ready to click and then we'll go on that run that maybe gets us to the playoffs. Um, I think it could be that. I think I think the big um, statement of confidence for him is that no one's panicked too much yet. Yeah. No one's said oh Monk out because not one of the games up until last weekend. Everyone's firmly behind him, and I think that's. That's the big thing. Mm. Um, results haven't gone our way, as we know that. Yeah. But the fact that we've, st- we've stuck with Monk and uh, there's been no 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 drama, no chaos as of yet. Um, with all this sort no of uh, walkouts. <laughs> yeah. Of a points st- deduction as well. I've been talked about. Yeah, the transfer thing. We. Um, <laughs> I was seeing a lot of posts about that, like the amount that other teams like Aston Villa had spent in the same time. And yeah. Not None of it makes sense, it. but you know we could we could face that. We're not sure what's going to happen with that yet. Yeah, exactly. But, we'll see. Um, but yeah, the recent results, I'm going to draw a comparison to the, the glory days of Alex McLeish as manager. Oh, yeah. Who then defected to Aston Villa and became the most hated man in Birmingham. Managed to actually unify the city on that, which was impressive. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking at the most recent results, like 0-0 with QPR at home, 0-0 with West... Uh, sorry, 1-1-1 with West Brom, 0-0 away at Sheffield United, 2-1 win over Leeds, who are the leaders. Like, the amount of goals we're conceding, when Alex McLeish was manager, it was so many 1-0 wins. Even under, like, um, Gary Rowett, it, we were conceding quite a lot of goals. So I guess uh, yeah, if yeah. you can get the clean sheets going, then it's surprisingly easy to get the goals as just the, the thing at the end rather than mm. the converse, which is where you're always conceding goals and always scoring. That will get you relegated eventually. It really will. Um, I think Look, I think the stats said that we're what, like the fourth best defensive record in the league. Yeah, back to I the think blues we've hit, of old. We've hit the bar the most times as well. <laughs> That's um, really important stats that you need to know. Just really important, yeah. Courtesy of Birmingham City. But you and you actually think the play's good again. Like one player who I guess he's starting to come out of his shell, uh, hot, hotter. Or yeah, he's been. I think he's been our yeah. outstanding player for the season. Best player. He's finally getting there. Um, I'm I'm going to get a Birmingham City shirt, and I did tweet about this. I was like, oh, at least I'll look good when we get relegated. <laughs> but I'm I'm close to being like, do you know what? I'm just going to get one with Jota on Jota on the back of it because I think like. He's starting to become the player who I guess we always felt he could be to, to use like a matrix style mm. colloquialism. But I, again, it's like I remember seeing him before at Leeds, like he just was not really deadly. They kind of 
sussed him out, whereas, again, away at Ellen Road, um, on, on the weekend, suddenly much more deadly again. Yeah, I think there's a big shift uh, in his in his performances when uh, Monk first came in at the end of last season. Mm. I think before that, he was he was still up every now and then. Um, maybe should have offered more, but since Monk came in, he's just looked at a different player altogether, and I think he's given he's been given the confidence to express himself and and, and work out on the wing and and take players on, um, which he wasn't doing enough enough of. And I think his link up play is so important as well. I think yeah. he brings the best of the uh, the strikers, I think. And, uh, so looking looking at the future and yeah. I guess the the next few games we've got coming up, um, what do you think of the run we've got? I guess going towards Christmas, I think we've got um, is it Ipswich at Ipswich home week, on yeah, Saturday, yeah. yeah, and that's the final one of September. Then Brentford away, Rotherham at home, so a lot of winnable games. So it, it could be the time to start that little run together, and then I think it could top top by Christmas. In fact, you you said I said nine points off nine top. points off top seven all off the playoffs. Just, uh, so. It could be like a pinball thing where you get two times points, and then all we need to do is double our points, and we're right up there. Well, that's the thing. What I, more could you want? Yeah, what more could you want? Um, it just really wouldn't surprise me with Blues, just the way that that we are as, as a club. Yeah, you wouldn't be surprised if it did happen. Was on the flip side, we could just uh, bomb now after that result of the weekend and just go like. Bottom, you know, bottom yeah. of the table is a bit stupid. We'll see. But uh, Ipswich next this weekend coming up, and I think we won their last, won against them at home uh, last season. I think yeah. they're second bottom at the moment. So, and hopefully on, low on confidence. Hopefully, and hopefully. on the Big on word. the plus side, moving across the club, there was a really nice tweet actually that happened. That's a, a nice segue into this. They had a, a joint men's and women's team photo. Oh, basically. they did, yeah, yeah. And it just shows that the commitment the Birmingham City have had to to unifying the clubs making sure that everyone knows that this isn't two random unrelated teams they are in the same spaces and they're you know not quite playing in the same stadium every week but again there's unity there the women's team three wins out of three top of the WSL so something yeah. going right there with Mark Skinner's grand plan absolutely smashing it I think they've got Man City this week and coming up as well so that's I mean, going to be the big one that's, yeah, the big hopefully test. we'll be there I literally was saying I just need to like hop on the emails and make sure that we build that bond again because I've just been so busy working all the Sundays yeah, that's Sundays are for happens, women's football, not for we'll be back. working in London. We will be back. Um, and what a story it would be as well, because you look at women's football now. Um, we're just talking, we're doing our other podcast, Forward Factor, just now, and looking at how Man United have made a team in the WSL 2 yeah. and beat Villa, was it 8 0, 9 0, or was it even 12 0? 12 0. 12 0. But as much as we like to laugh and poke fun, it is a bit difficult because you have a team that is like. Uh, more of a grassroots women's football team a, a younger team and then Man United women coming through having no history of supporting women's football and just buying in the best players and being totally out of place in that league so it's good to see a club like Birmingham City suddenly shoot up and if we beat Man City as we did last season there's, this could be a big story yeah there's no reason why we can't build on, on that um, and I think you know you look at the Man, Man United women's situation I think you let them get on with it you know it's, it's their own their own club but a lot, really like what Blues are doing yeah um, they're looking at long term vision not just the short term it's just great football to watch and I was saying even the Leeds game like, I was watching highlights of that and I haven't actually been watching Blues men like for quite a while highlights wise and I was just like it felt a bit stagnant and people were stumbling and making mistakes the, the Women's Super League the, the physical aspect of the players yeah they're behind the men on that as they always biologically will be Yeah. but the actual quality of technical play you, you see some really intelligent passes attacking moving it, it's really satisfying to watch the growth there I think yeah and I'm really surprised that more people haven't jumped on board with that um, okay, okay. If I've just I've just remembered this discussion now as well I was actually having it with my friends we could make it into I oh, know I don't really I don't really have any like serious serious discussion music I, I have <laughs> I don't know, I have like a news bed, so I can just use... We'll use that. I'll use that, and it can be like a news topic. Here we go. Okay, so this is the, the important discussion, okay. I remember at uni, what they do is for Varsity games, Varsity being when Warwick Uni took on Cov, Polly, bleep, smash the Polly, hashtag, <coughs> just uh, getting the Warwick pride in there. What they do is they put the Varsity rugby game on after the um, Wasps rugby game at the Rico Arena. Yeah. So you'd have all the people there to see Wasps, which is like 15,000 people. And then they'd be like at the end, oh, and your ticket entry includes uh, the chance to see this rugby game, the student ones afterwards. And it would mean that your attendance would be, say, 
maybe like 2,000 instead of like 1,000, I think. It could add a lot. Do you think that with Blues women, they should either try and put it on before or after the men on the match date, or do you think that would just maybe undermine it and not boost attendances as yeah, much? Yeah, it could un undermine it, I think. Um, like I think it'd be quite difficult that, to Because that's the one thing. The around one, that, but... on, on one hand, I'm like, imagine if they did a, like a 12, a 12 kickoff for the yeah. women, and it would be like a support band for the main band. Because there's no doubting the men's team is bigger in terms of like the attendances and the support. But then again, like there'd be loads of stuff about like distractions, I guess, of the women's team not getting their own focus enough. And then yeah. I'm sure there'd be people moaning about the quality of the pitch if it got scuffed up by the women's team first. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I think maybe the best route for now is just keep stick, you know, stick out what they're doing, the way they're doing it right now. Yeah. And eventually, in the long term, it'll, it'll pay off. Um, I think if you try and work around it and. Maybe undermine it in a way. Yeah, I, I guess because that's just the one thing that I. So long term, but... the, the one thing I feel about it is like, in, I just want people to be in that room. This this news base really distracts me. Now. I just I'll be in that room, be in that stadium, and see the quality of play. Because it, it, if you had captive audience of fans showing up expecting to see football, um, and you present them some of the attacking play that we've had this season, there's been some crazy goals, like and, and last season. I know the, the the team are capable of it, and maybe they'd be like, oh. You know, why am I not seeing this every weekend, whenever it's on? Because it's quite inconsistent at the moment. It really is. Uh, but I think once the audience is there for women's football, I think that it will just yeah. take off, you know, so much. And as I said, it's just a really, really big surprise that it's not, it's not taken off yet for them. But yeah, no doubt it will do. Will. Just like all the indie bands in the Madlands, they'll all be they up there, do. and I'll be on tour with them every time. Um, Right, we're going to finish on the, the solemn note of what's going down on Mikhail Forsell's Twitter. <laughs> We've missed him so much. What's he up to? I love Mikhail Forsell. I'm going to name my firstborn son Mikhail, not Michael Mikhail. Um, I mean, let's see what he's been up to. He, Our boy is... Uh, he's been a keynote speaker at oh, yeah. Sports... S uh, the Sports Spot Sumi. I, I think it's some kind of harvest event. In, uh, he does a lot of stuff in Finland that yeah. I don't understand what it is, but he does it. And oh my god, a, a bombshell. <laughs> Stun effects. Charlie, um, Charlie Sloth level. Mikhail Forsell has never seen Pearl Harbor. Neither have I, to be honest. Neither have I. So I guess it's not that big a bombshell. I just wanted to kind of. He got 42 favourites, so I thought it was kind of a big deal. Him and his wife are such a like power couple. But it's just it's just really great, I think, seeing, you know. <laughs> Simon in the background's just laughing so much. Oh, and he's done a photo shoot with kittens. Look, it's Mikhail Forsell and kittens. I'm gonna save this and tweet it right now on the blues cast. And everyone we're gonna get bare retweets for that. We need to. Not, in in that. case you're That's having beautiful. a bad day, Mikhail Forsell kittens. What more do you want? This has been the blues cast. Like, subscribe, smash that, smash that like button that we don't have. We'll um, and yeah keep keep your eyes peeled on our Twitter hopefully we'll be back uh, live on Sunday with coverage of Women's Super League really excited just to see how the women do any closing thoughts any closing thoughts uh, EFL please don't uh, take points off us because uh, please don't we're struggling at the minute it's just unfair okay don't be a don't be a no good don't be a no good hater that's me when I see Mikhail Forsell on a kitten Bye, everybody.